Hello everybody, this is episode 2 of Beginner Web Design. And uh, in this episode, if you saw the pretty much the layout of this series in the episode 1, we're going to be talking a little bit about what HTML is, how to use it, and basically what it does for your website. So, first of all, I'm just going to start out by going over what you need to create your own website. So first of all, you're going to need both a domain and hosting. Now uh, these two things can get a little bit pricey depending on your host and uh, there's absolutely tons and tons of different hosts out there ranging from the prices of $3 a month to $200 a month. It all depends on what type of host you need. So there are web shared hosting which is basically you are on a server with a bunch of other people and you don't have access to things like uh, the root of the server and you can't edit things like php.ini which we'll learn about later but it's pretty much the ideal solution for anyone that just needs a website. Further than that there's virtual private servers or VPS and uh, this pretty much lets you access your web server from an actual operating system so for example Linux or OpenOS and uh, there's just many solutions for that and that's best if you're gonna host a uh, you know if you need a game server or something like that or if you just need more RAM and you need more access to more root commands then you know you need a VPS most people don't need that unless they're really a, uh, a large company that needs more access to those type of things. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then you don't need it. And uh, lastly, there's dedicated hosting, where you are not on a server with any other customers. It is all yours, so you're going to have larger space, you're going to have more RAM, more bandwidth, and you can pretty much do whatever you like. That's really great for if you have a huge company that just has a lot of assets and you know you really need a large server then you're gonna go with dedicated servers. Now uh, as, far as, as far as where to get these hosting plans the current one that I'm using is DreamHost and I'll show you this one here. DreamHost.com is by far the best web hosting company I have ever used and uh, it's only $8.95 a month currently and it has so many features which you can see right off of the website. It has pretty much everything you could ever need. Everything is unlimited too. It really is just a great solution and it's a very fair price for what you do get and uh, they're very professional. The technical support is fantastic. It is all right there. However, if you know you don't really have this amount of money to spend, you can go with a cheaper option like 50webs.com. They are also pretty good, but um, you know you're not going to get as much. Everything is limited, but you could see here you can get a very very basic website for only three dollars a month, which isn't really that bad. If you need a VPS server or a dedicated server, you can either use DreamHost as well, they also do that, or you can use MediaTemple.com. They are the big guys. They really have some really nice customers. As you can see over here, you know, ABC, Starbucks, Adobe. So they really have a solid, solid reputation. If you order from MediaTemple, you know you are going to have a great server. So it all really depends on your budget and what you need. Now if you have your hosting plan then you're going to also need a domain name and this you don't really have to shop around for companies it's pretty much just whichever you can find is the cheapest. So the domain name it really is just the rights to having whatever.com so for example knowyourmactuts.com is a domain I have to pay an annual fee to keep that domain hosted under my name. To get one, you really can just go to any website, just Google for you know domain registrars, 
and you know you'll get a, a ton of results I use DreamHost just because I like it to be all-in-one and they have domain solutions for $9.99 a year um, I have seen some companies offer $8.99 and on the other side I've seen and I've on the other hand I've seen companies with $13.99 a year so I would just recommend just looking around and of course whenever you're going with a new company just check ratings just google you know is it a scam because there are a lot of falsy uh, web hosts out there and you wanna you know google what they have to offer you know are they reliable things like that you just wanna make sure that you're getting the right company for you now moving on you're gonna also need a pretty much a text editor now text edit is manageable but uh, the first thing you have to do is go to format make plain text if you're gonna create a, a script or an HTML page but it isn't always the most reliable based on the character encoding that some languages used so I don't really recommend using text edit for things like that um, the one I use is Coda which you can see right here and uh, this is absolutely amazing I cannot recommend this more than I already have to pretty much everyone I know this is absolutely fantastic you couldn't ask for any more it has editor tabs you can preview it right there there's a whole CSS little window here where you can just edit it based on a user interface rather than even needing to type in code you can connect it via SSH or a local shell it has FTP integration as soon as you say something it uploads right to the FTP and it comes with books too it's absolutely fantastic however Coda does come with a hefty price tag of $99.99 now even if it's out of your budget I would definitely consider it if you're gonna be a professional in this field you need to have the right tool that does it all for you and Coda is really that tool However, if you don't want to dish out that amount, you can go with an option like TextMate, which you can just do a quick Google for. Or if you're on Windows, you can look for something like Notepad++, which also gets the job done. You just need to find the one that is right for you and the one that you feel comfortable working with. So now let's actually move on to the point of this video, and that's what is HTML? And first, let me start off by saying that HTML is the building block to your website. It's where you define the elements that are on your page. You can define blocks of uh, text, links, navigation, headers, footers, videos, audio, whatever you like is specified in HTML. And that's really the main use of it. Every single website uses HTML in some way so even if it's written in a different language ultimately it comes down to HTML in your browser just to show you a quick example if we go right to YouTube right here if we go to view and view source we can see their very own rendered HTML code so HTML is mostly the defined by tags so for example, if you wanted to create a paragraph, you would type open left pointy bracket, a P, and then the close right pointy bracket. Now you can see my text editor just completed that for me, but this is the basic format for any HTML tag. So right here I have left bracket P, right bracket, which means start a new paragraph. So then I can enter any text, and I'll grab some text from this nifty little widget here. And there's my paragraph. Now to close this, I type the same thing, but this time I'm going to put a slash before the P. And that's how we close that element. And this works for many different things. For example, video works the same way. A, which means link, and header which obviously is the header of your page and it's all defined by just an opening tag and the closing tag 
it's really not that difficult. Now we're going to be going over specifically what each of these tags mean and any additional attributes that you can apply to them. One last thing I want to say is that HTML actually does change. For example, this is a new version of HTML called HTML5 and you don't need to update any software to use HTML5 or any new version of HTML. It's not something that you need to upgrade your web server either. Basically, anytime a new tag or a new element for HTML is specified, the browsers such as Apple with Safari, Mozilla with Firefox, Google with Chrome, they will all update with the new information so they can render those elements correctly. One of the problems is with Internet Explorer. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, Microsoft just doesn't update its browser quick enough. So HTML5 features that could have been installed in Internet Explorer 8 hasn't been used since Internet Explorer 10. So basically, there's a huge problem with older versions of IE not supporting newer technologies. And that's not necessarily a good thing because Internet Explorer is a frequently used browser. So it's not like it's a browser that only 2% of the world uses. It's a, it's a major browser that you know over 60% of the world browses in. So not being able to support the newest technology is a serious problem and that does cause a lot of pain for web designers because they have to find hacks and workarounds to make Internet Explorer versions work for them. We're going to be going over that too in the next version, in the, I'm sorry, in the next episode. And uh, the one last thing I want to say before we finish up this episode is that just for being a Know Your Mac subscriber, if you choose to get a hosting plan with DreamHost today, you will receive a discount as well. This promotional code is located in the description. When you go and purchase something from DreamHost, you can enter it upon checkout and a, an amount will be deducted from your total. All the information about this is located in the description as well. I encourage you to go try it. You'll even be getting a free domain name. So that's one free domain for me and another from DreamHost. So that's two domains if you decide to check out using DreamHost. So definitely try that out and tell me how it goes. And I hope you all tune in for the next episode.